Representative Gordon Hintz, the Assembly Democratic Leader. I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Representative Dana Walks, who also sits on the WEDIC board. Um, we wanted to come here today just to answer questions and raise questions, really, um, about the current dialogue and narrative and the disconnect between a lot of the talking points being used by Governor Walker, WEDIC, and the Foxconn, um, and the reality on the ground in terms of the project that is occurring and that has changed dramatically from the very project that was introduced last July, that was debated before the legislature, that was uh, signed into contract by WEDIC, um, and the fact that despite the project changing, in other words, the scope is dramatically changed, the project that is under construction is a much smaller project, um, we still have a governor, a company, an administration that is using investment numbers, job numbers, and compensation numbers uh, based on a completely different economic analysis. Now we know uh, that there is an economic analysis by Ernst & Young for how much capital investment, how many jobs will be created, and what the compensation and type of jobs will be for the project that's being done. However, the information on that has been largely redacted. We haven't had that information, so the question we ask is why is Governor Walker continuing to use 13,000 jobs, $10 billion investment, 53,000 average compensation, even though those numbers were the result of an economic analysis for a project that is no longer happening? Why is Governor Walker and Foxconn using a model uh, on the campus uh, when President Trump is visiting that includes a corning glass plant that is no longer happening? No longer happening according to Corning? No longer happening according to Foxconn? So the question you ask yourself is, why is Governor Walker announcing innovation centers in Green Bay, in Eau Claire, yet nobody there has heard anything? about purchase price, economic justification, or when there will be a closing other than it will happen after the election. Uh, so uh, yesterday I sent a letter to Wiedek asking for clarification between the talking points and the reality on the ground, uh, the justification that was used to pass the legislation and to sign the contract, and what is happening on the ground, and the outstanding questions that the public of Wisconsin deserves to know uh, and haven't received yet. So again, last July you had an announcement, and the invitation to the announcement was come to the announcement of a project that is going to build the Generation 10.5 large panel LCD screens, the first of its kind factory in the United States, the second of its kind in the world, it will create 13,000 jobs, $9 billion or $10 billion of investment. Um, that is what was introduced. That is what was debated. That is what the public was told. That was what was passed in legislation. If you read the contract signed by WEDIC, it also uses language that it's going to be a generation 10.5 plant. Um, the project, again, under construction is supposed to be about 20 to 30% of that 10.5 plant. It does not require a local supply chain. Many of the components will be imported from the existing supply chain in China. Uh, Foxconn themselves said they can import from Kentucky uh, the uh, other supplies that they would need for the glass production. Um, yet, continuing into this campaign season, we hear repeated talking points that have no grounding or justification. And so, you know, we're here today to sort of raise this issue. We certainly hope for clarification on all the questions that we asked related to the public's right to know um, where its taxpayer dollars are going, what jobs are going to be there, what the wages are going to be, you know, especially the median wages, and all the things that have changed between the debate that took place from the elected representatives, the contract that was signed, and what is ultimately happening uh, in our state going forward, because it doesn't just, um, this is something that under, you know, in the debate that had under the best case scenario a 25 year payback, that impacts budgets over the next few years considerably, um, and one of the biggest issues was opportunity costs and risks. 
and we deserve to know heading into the next budget, we certainly deserve to know heading into this campaign cycle what it is we're talking about. And if you're saying the things that Weedig, Foxconn, and the governor are saying repeatedly based on something that's not happening, you're not telling the truth. All right, thanks. Do you guys have an LFB memo updating anything yet? So we sat down with LFB, um, and one of the things they said was if you could get the uh, redacted information from Weedick, which I think the reason it was originally redacted was in May of 2017 when they were preparing the RFPs, there were two um, memos provided uh, for the projects that were going to be done. The Generation 10.5 large panel facility, which was the one that was passed and signed into contract, and a smaller Generation 6 facility. So we know that the job numbers, um, we know that the compensation and positions and the capital investment are around. We just don't know what those are. The one thing that was not redacted in the information that uh, was released and that Representative Walk gained again is that the facility that we're building requires uh, up to 5,200 jobs. So even with what we do know, it certainly falls short of 13,000. Um, yet we continue to hear 13,000. So the only thing that is under construction, the only thing that we remotely know is going to happen is something that is you know, just under 8,000 jobs fewer than what they're saying. And of course, the indirect jobs would be much smaller without the local supply chain needed. So um, we're hopeful with uh, you know, coming across the 5,200 that we could go for that. But remember, the Fiscal Bureau analysis with the 25-year payback was based on the full economic analysis by Ernst & Young that we know exists. But it seems like they don't want to release that because then their numbers that they've been saying for the last year uh, would no longer be true. So is there any other way that you could get at these, this more detailed analysis, or could you call on another analysis, or I mean, how, is there any way that you have in mind to, to get this information? Well, I, I, you know, we asked and opened uh, a letter with all the outstanding questions, um, you know, including can we get the information on the number of jobs, the different positions, and what the compensation is going to be. Um, the big one is we have no idea what the capital investment is going to be. Because remember, one of the big concerns is for a company that hopes to automate 80% of its workforce uh, in the next decade is, well, what happens if they automate all their jobs but they spend the full amount of capital investment? Um, the fact that we have no idea, other than most industry experts say the plant they're building is 20 to 30% the size of the original plans. So, um, we're hoping for, and we ask for legitimate answers, because I think the public deserves to know that when you have a project that has changed, um, that has such a dramatic impact on future budgets, um, you know, we, we, we should get those answers. So let's say you get these answers back, um, and they're, they confirm what you already know, it's going to be a lot smaller plant, the jobs numbers are going to be lower, given that the contract is also very vague, uh, what, is there any specific recourse you think that the state can seek, um, you know, if you are to get these answers? I mean, look, something is happening, uh, and I think we all know that, uh, but I think the lack of training, you know, the most important thing you can do with a big project like this, where there's lots of doubt, where there's considerable cost to the taxpayers, is to be honest and to be transparent. And it, I think it should be bothersome, it's bothersome to me and it should be to the public that you have an administration and a company continuing to use uh, you know, data associated with a project that is no longer happening. Um, so on the one hand, you know, yes, there'll be fewer jobs, which would mean fewer credits, but I don't know how it you know, meshes with the contract. I mean, the contract language may enable a totally different project despite the fact that it mentions uh, pretty strong language on the large panel facility no longer happening. Um, but I don't know how the smaller plant works with the job um, requirements that were put into the contract in future out years. Um, I believe one of the things, interestingly enough, is that the minimum job number that is required 
for the minimum uh, jobs required to receive any credits by 2022 is 5,200 jobs, which would be the job number that is in the information on the smaller plant. Um, but again, with no other fleshing of the details, and remember the other big change is that the entire debate before the legislature was that only jobs under $100,000 were going to be eligible for credits. And the contract includes jobs under $400,000. So, you know, they talk about average wage for a project that's no longer happening. Uh, an average pay of forty or $53,000 could mean that 93% of workers are earning $30,000 because of that increase. Uh, the fact that that was changed after we voted on a bill um, you know, leads to a lot of questions, and that's certainly another thing that we asked specifically about in the letter. You know, the, the bottom line is, folks, th these, these are taxpayer dollars. Uh, it's, it's critical that, you know, the governor pay attention to what's going on with taxpayer dollars and, and make sure that the public investment is sound and, and makes sense. I mean, right from the onset, when I saw these documents come out, I was wondering many things. Number one, there was never a present value analysis done. So the value of the dollars going in were not compared to the values of the dollars coming out, which is very unusual for a business project of this magnitude. Normally, the present value is, is something that's taken into account. So we've got straight dollars coming back in the 2040 range, um, but it's dollar on dollar. It's not been, you know, inflation hasn't been taken into account. Secondly, we've got to wonder what's going on. I mean, what in the world is going on? This could be the mother of all bait and switches. Because, I mean, the legislature was led to believe that this project was in kind one animal. It's turning into something else. And what is the relationship exactly between Foxconn and this, uh, and this governor? I mean, numbers start slipping in Green Bay and suddenly there's a Foxconn facility going in. Numbers start sl uh, slipping in, in Eau Claire and there's suddenly a Foxconn facility being put up. Just what's going on here? Just what is going on? These are the things that we need to know. These are why we're asking these questions. Well, the media continues to insist that this is pay as you grow. You, know, you, you don't create the jobs, you don't invest any capital, you're not going to get incentives. You're not buying that? No, no, I mean, we're, we're not disputing that. What we're disputing is what Weedick is saying, what Foxconn is saying, what the governor is saying is not based on anything remotely close to what's happening. In other words, we, yeah, we, we know the conditions that are in there, and that's why I said um, the jobs may be less, but we have no idea what the capital investment is. In some ways, it could be worse for us in terms of how long the payback is. So you know, the fact that they keep using compensation data, investment data, and uh, jobs data that is associated with a project that's no longer happening doesn't give me any idea as a resident of the state, much less a lawmaker, what, what's actually happening. Well, several times you've said that this is not happening, it's not happening, and basically they said so, uh, budget time will happen in phase two. Could, could happen. That's and after they denied. Several times it is not happening, it's not happening. Well, so how's this? So, the Corning Company said it will take a two-thirds subsidy. The state said that, so it's a billion dollar glass plant. So Corning said we would need 660 million to construct it. The state said we don't have any more money to give. So then the question is, would Foxconn put 660 million dollars of their own skin in? And I'll remind you that on May 23rd, it was reported that Foxconn was changing the scope of their project dramatically to make the smaller screens, this is just three months ago, and Foxconn said on May 23rd, that report is inaccurate and not based on any facts. Less than a month later, Foxconn said, actually, that report was true. We're building the smaller plant. Then they said, well, the second phase could still happen, and now they're just saying, oh, no, 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 we're still going to spend as much as it's on that napkin. You know, my point is, the 13,000 and the 10 billion, those figures, outside of being written on a napkin, were the result of a specific economic analysis. 
And that economic analysis was a part of a project that is no longer happening or under construction. And we have a significant obstacle to that even happening. So, you know, pardon me if I'm a little skeptical of a company that has a terrible reputation around the world for, especially in the US, for backing out of commitments who changed their mind uh, after denying something and then three weeks later said, oh, no, no, that's true, and then says, well, we could still do that. I mean, look, if you're going to be honest about what we know that's actually happening, what we know that's actually happening is they're moving forward with a smaller production facility that doesn't involve as, as local a supply chain, that only adds 5,200 direct jobs, much far fewer jobs uh, indirect, and that we have no idea what the capital investment is. What I hear from the governor is that we're, the numbers, the, the jobs data, the capital investment associated with the project that's no longer happening. I would just like them to be transparent, honest, and provide the information to the public uh, that is actually happening with the project. And instead, it seems like we're getting, you know, the truth doesn't matter. All right, no one has any other questions? Appreciate it.